they started. Okay, great. All right, you can share your screen. Okay. I don't think you need further introduction. So everyone from our studio is super IP. I just skip that part. Oh, can you see my slides now? Yeah. Okay, great. All right. So, uh, hi everyone. Uh, thanks for coming to this uh, webinar on the um, a few relatively new packages in the R Markdown ecosystem. Um, I have done this kind of webinars many times before, but it still feels weird to talk to my monitor here for an hour. But hopefully you can bear with me and we can go through some of these uh, packages and I will show you, I will primarily show you some uh, examples instead of uh, like the, the source code. So um, I, I will start this talk with some uh, very basic examples to show you uh, some of the features of our markdown. I guess most of you might be familiar with them, so I will be quick uh, in showing. Then the, the uh, majority of my time will be spent on some uh, new, uh, I should say relatively new, because some of these packages are not really very new. So basically I will show you um, some R Markdown extension packages that can help you write like journal articles or use different um, styles or create dashboards. And sometimes you can also create uh, presentations. And also you can write um, uh, your books or even websites uh, with R Markdown. So for, for everything you need to uh, know about R Markdown, you can just go to the homepage of R Markdown, which is rmarkdown.rstudio.com. You can find pretty much everything there. So just to get started, I will show you a very brief example of an R Markdown document, just in case uh, some of you may not know anything about R Markdown. So basically for an R Markdown document is a plain text document which consists of two parts. The first part is the metadata. We call this the YAML metadata, where you can specify the title and author and output formats. So then the second part is the body of the document. So basically, you can have like paragraphs or bullets in R code chunks, and sometimes also inline R code. So in this minimal example, I have one R code chunk which is embedded uh, through the syntax like this. So three backticks, curly braces, little r inside. And then, so th that's how we start uh, an r code chunk. And then we close this r code chunk by another three backticks. So in between, we just write the r code. You, you can like build your models and draw some graphics, do any kind of computation you want. And then you can, so that, that is an R code chunk. And you can also have inline R code. So for example, here I'm using the syntax uh, backtick R followed by a space, followed by the R code B square bracket one, which means the first element of the vector B. And then I close this inline expression by another backtick. So for this kind of source documents, you can, uh, you can basically uh, click a button in our in our studio. Um, you can basically click this uh, net button here to compile this document. So once, um, so when this document is compiled, the source code will be actually executed, and you will see the actual output from the computing. For example. For this inline expression, it will be replaced by the actual value of uh, the first element of B. So this is called actually called a dynamic document. It's dynamic because you only write source code in the in the document, and you don't have to maintain the output. The output will be automatically generated. So, and then 
uh, I want to talk briefly about the the knit button I just showed you in our studio because it's important to understand what it actually does so that for example you will know where to look for uh, documentation so basically when you click that knit button it calls a function in the R package named uh, R markdown it calls this render function to compile uh, this document so then actually R markdown basically is a it's a combination of the knitter package in R and another tool called pandoc so basically for an R markdown document uh, it will be uh, compiled to a markdown document through the knit function in knitter and then pandoc will compile that markdown document to other document formats for example html or pdf documents or word documents or ebooks so it's it's a two step process first it's it will go through knitter and then it goes through pandoc so the knitter is another r package and you can find its documentation from the website ehui.name slash knitter and the most important page that you may want to look at is the uh, page for knitter chunk options. So actually, I didn't I didn't mention chunk options in the in the first example. So actually, inside the curly braces, you can write some um, chunk options to uh, decide the the behavior of these code chunks. For example, you can add a chunk option here. For example, uh, echo equals false. That will that basically means you want to hide the source code in the output document. I will show you examples in in a minute. So basically, there is a uh, chunk options that you can use in the chunk header inside the curly brace. And I wrote a book in 2015. Uh, uh, on this knitter package, if you're if you're interested, you can take a look at that book. That is basically the comprehensive documentation of the knitter package. And then let's talk a little bit about uh, pandoc. So after an R markdown document is compiled to markdown with all the R code chunks and the inline R expressions being executed, so pandoc will. Uh, compile markdown to other document formats so if you really care about markdown i strongly recommend you to read the menu of pen pendoc at least once to know all the possibilities of uh, pendoc's markdown so actually markdown was originally invented by another guy and the syntax was very sim was very 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 simple and there are a lot of missing features and pandoc has added a lot of interesting and useful features to the original markdown for example you can write math ex expressions you can write tables and, and figures like that in, in markdown and so that is one major contribution of pandoc and the other contribution of pandoc is actually the uh, uh, multiple output formats so originally markdown was invented for only for html output you you can create web pages easily from markdown and pandoc made it possible to export markdown to other formats including html word pdf latex and even presentations um so next i'm going to show you um a quick example of uh, markdown documents and markdown present presentations and I want to show you the built-in formats in the R markdown package so this is a uh, an R markdown document as you can see it, uh, it has the YAML metadata and the body so we specify the title author date and output formats there and for this uh, for this document it has uh, several components like can have uh, sections, paragraphs, quotes, bullets, and R code chunks. And if you want to draw uh, graphics, you can just use any graphics packages. 
that you like, like ggplot2 or even base R graphics. You can uh, you can write math ex expressions in a pair of uh, dollar signs. That is an inline uh, math expression. You can also write uh, math expressions of uh, of the display style, which basically is a, the uh, the the double dollar signs. This basically means the math expression will be in its own uh, paragraph. And then there are other features like um, tables and citations and footnotes. So for for an R Markdown document like this, you can click that knit button to uh, compile this document to. Uh, so, so right now I'm showing you the. HTML format. So this is basically a web page. <clears throat> you can see it has multiple sections, and you, you can you can see like the math expressions have been rendered. And in the source document, I used a source R code like B1 and B2, and in the output document, the the number source code. And also, you can see text output and graphics output. So, so basically, all you have to do is that you write the source code, and then you click that button, you get the. So that is the HTML document, and then you can also knit this document to uh, LaTeX and PDF document. So the same document. Uh, different types of output. So this is a PDF document. For example, if you want to print anything, uh, I I would probably recommend you to use the uh, PDF output because it's more printer friendly than other formats. So basically, all the features are available in pretty much all the output formats. For example, on, on the web page, you can see like the graphics and the table. And then you, you also see uh, graphics and uh, tables and citations. So that is uh, PDF. And you can also knit it to Word. I don't have Word installed on my laptop, so I'm not going to show you that. And for all these output formats, they are, they are actually uh, customizable. So basically, you can click this gear button here and select uh, output options. You can choose all of these um, options, like whether you want to include table of contents, what kind of uh, syntax highlighting themes you want, or what kind of uh, CSS themes you want. After you change these options, our studio will automatically update your YAML metadata. For example, I just chose a table of contents. So it added TOC colon yes to my YAML metadata. And I chose the journal theme. So the YAML metadata has been updated. And I can click the button again to compile this document. So now you can see the, the colors look a little bit different because I used a different theme and then a table of contents has been added to the um, output document here. So these are customizable. So for the pretty much the same document, you can compile it to presentations. There are three built-in presentation formats in, in the R Markdown package, IO Slides, Slidey, and Beamer. So you can knit this document to for example, IO slides, which looks like this. So it's it's um it's an HTML5 format. Uh, basically, the, the slides looks like this, and uh, Slidey is also an HTML5 slides format. They the major difference is in the style. So still, everything is there. Math expressions, tables, footnotes, citations. 
And you can also knit this document to PDF through uh, Beamer, which is a package in LaTeX. So again, the same content, different style, and different Yikui. output format. Yikui. Yeah. I got a question from the audience. I type okay. it in the chat window. It's, it's about, um, I don't quite understand that question, but it's if I want to publish a PDF with graphic inside it generated by Markdown, can I share it or data need to be with it? Well, it, it depends on whether you want other people to be able to compile your R Markdown document. So if you, if, you want, if you want them to be able to reproduce your results, then yes, you have to share everything, including source code, data, and all the uh, materials that were used to uh, generate your output. Otherwise, if you only want other people to, to read your output, then no, you, you, you only need to send the PDF. And the other people need to know how to run R, things like that. If they want to, if they only want to read the output, then there's nothing else they they need. They only need the output uh, document, like the PDF document or the web page. Oh, thank you. Yep. All right. So, um, okay. So these are very uh, simple examples of. Oops. Simple examples of R Markdown documents. And next, I'm going to show you some uh, ex extension packages. So the first one I want to show you is the is a package called Articles. Um, it, it, it's already on CRAN, so you, you can use the function install dot packages to install it. So basically, the, the the key idea of the Articles packages is that we have provided a lot of uh, LaTeX templates for, for Pandoc to generate the PDF output. So these LaTeX templates are based on uh, some journals. So if you want to know which journals are currently supported in the articles package, you can just go to this link. So uh, I'm not going to show you that. Instead, I'm going to show you uh, how you can use the articles package in R Studio. So basically, you can create a new R Markdown document from the menu uh, R Markdown, and then after you have installed the uh, articles package, you can actually create a new R Markdown document from template. So for example, here I choose I, I choose uh, the Journal of Statist Statistical Software, and I want to create um, a paper under my documents directory. Let me name the, my paper uh, JSS. So after that, I've got a JSS directory under my documents uh, directory. And then our studio will show you a default template. So the, the, key, uh, the key thing here is the output format specified in the output field. So the output format here it's, uh, is um, articles, colon, colon, JSS article. So basically, that is a special output format. So previously, you have seen other output formats like Beamer presentation, SlideE presentation, IO slides presentation, and also PDF document, HTML document. So similarly, and now you specify the GSS article output format. And then you can specify other things like the title and author of your uh, paper. And then you can start writing your paper using uh, the markdown syntax. So you can still embed any R code chunks in your, in your paper. So then you can click, uh, click the net button to compile. Uh, this document to uh, to PDF. So basically, now you've got 
a paper created from the GSS template. So you, you, uh, we had an R code chunk there, so now it has been executed. So you can embed any R code in your paper to produce things like tables and graphics. What if there is a new journal that, that's not on the list and we want to produce? Them? Well, there are a lot of journals that are not on the list of the articles package. In, in these cases, I, you, if you're familiar with the journal templates, uh, we will appreciate it if you can uh, make uh, contributions to this articles package. So actually, let me, let me open this link. So we have, we have these kind of articles supported in the, uh, in the articles package. So a lot of them were actually contributed from other users. So if you're interested, you can, you can take a look at the source code of the articles package and make your own contribution. And we'll be happy to include some uh, new journal uh, templates in this package. Okay, then um, the second package I want to show you is the uh, Tufty package. Uh, so basically, the main uh, the main behind this package is to port a special style by Edward Tufty to uh, ARM Markdown. And this package is on CRAN. You can install it from CRAN, and then you can create a new R Markdown document from the menu, from template. It's, uh, then you can choose the TFT handout uh, template from the list here. So let me create that document under documents again and name it as TFT. So our studio will also show you a default template. And now you can, so actually for the Tufty package, uh, let, me, let me compile this document first because it takes a while to finish the compilation. So for this Tufty package, it also has uh, some output formats, including Tufty HTML, Tufty handout, and Tufty book. So for these three output formats, uh, Tufty HTML is apparently for HTML output. So, uh, so it is basically a, a web page. So the style actually looks like this. So it's basically a two column style. There's a main column on the left hand side and there's a side column on the, on the right. So you have the, your title and subtitle, author and date information there, and there are multiple sections uh, on this page. And there what are a few, go ahead. What, what does Tufty mean? Tufty is, an, is a name of a person, Edward Tufty. Okay. He's, yeah, he's very famous, especially for some of uh, his work on graphics. Yeah. So, um, so there are a few features uh, about this Tufty style. Uh, so, for the for the side, uh, for, for the margin column on the right, you can actually put things like footnotes and margin notes, and sometimes margin figures, and also arbitrary content in the margin. So the 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 good thing about uh, this uh, text in margin is that, for example, for footnotes, typically you see footnotes at the very end of an article. So that means you have to move your eyes acro across a long distance to read that footnote. But for the Tufty style, are placed in the margin so that when you see a footnote, you can actually easily move your eyes to the content of the footnote. And um, and this style, this HTML style is actually 
responsive in the sense that when the the width of the window is too narrow, you can see the <clears throat> right margin has been hidden here. So you, you now you, you can only read the, the body of your document, but if you click on this uh, footnote numbers, you can actually toggle the visibility of these footnotes. So imagine you are reading this article on your uh, mobile device, which has a, a narrow screen. You can actually um, click on these footnotes or the margin or the margin note marks to toggle them. And there are other styles for uh, design specifically for figures. And here is a here is a margin figure, and and the syntax for the margin figure is actually pretty simple. So basically, you just add a chunk option named figure dot margin to the chunk header. So you specify figure dot margin equals true, then the figure will be placed in the margin. And similarly, there is a, a another option called uh, full width figure dot full width. So if you specify true, then the figure will take the full width of the page. So as I mentioned, it's a two column layout, but sometimes your figure might be too wide. And in that case, you, you probably want to want your figure to um, extend to the full width of your page so that you can show the content of this figure more clearly. So that's the HTML output. And you can also compile the same document to PDF using the Tufti handout uh, format. And the appearance of the PDF document will look similar, but behind the scenes, it actually uses a uh, a LaTeX package, a LaTeX uh, class named uh, Tufty Handout. You can see the style is very similar. So I'm not going to show you all of them, but pretty much all the features that you saw in the HTML output are also uh, present in the PDF output. And I'm not going to show you the Tufty book uh, format, because it, it, it also looks similar to uh, the Tufty handout format. So that is pretty much for the style. It's pretty much a, a special style for Markdown. And then I want to talk about the Flex dashboard package. It's so basically this. Uh, the, the, the motivation of this package is to allow you to arrange uh, multiple things in an R Markdown document in, in blocks or, or, or over a grid. It's also on CRAN, so you can install it from CRAN. And I'm going to show you a brief example of Flex dashboard. So you can still create a new dashboard from the template. Let me save this to. Um, you have to install the Flex dashboard package to be able to see that um, on the list. Yes, yes. Yeah, if you if you haven't installed this package, you just uh, go to the packages panel and hit the install button. You can uh, Flex dashboard. You can install it from Cran. After that, you will be able to see that from the uh, list of templates. Um, let me just uh, compile this document. So this, this package is primarily for HTML output. So in, um, let, me, let me make it simpler first. So for this, our Markdown document, I have 
um, three sections. Actually, uh, strictly speaking, I have three sub subsections uh, in this document. So by default, all these sub subsections will be uh, arranged in a single column will be in uh, three rows. Uh, let me change the title a little bit. Uh, nice dashboard. They will appear in three rows. And if, if, if you want them to appear in uh, columns, you can actually the a parameter orientation from columns to rows. By default, uh, orientation's uh, value is columns. If you change that to rows, you can see now the three sub subsections are arranged in a single row in uh, three columns. So you can actually uh, make more uh, uh, complicated uh, layouts using this package by introducing um, subsections. So basically you use two hash marks. Um, let's see. The actual content of the section title does not matter here. So basically, if you add the second level section header to uh, split your third level uh, sections, actually it'll, you can achieve some uh, more complicated layout. For, ex for example, here, so for the first uh, subsection, I have a, a single sub subsection here. And uh, it is arranged in in the left column of this dashboard. And then for the second subsection, I have two sub subsections. And they are arranged in uh, a single column with uh, two rows. So actually, you can also change this to change this to the other way, you can make the first sub subsection to appear in a row and the next two sub subsections to appear in another row. Now you can see the first subsection is in the first row and the next two sub subsections are in the second row in two columns. And of course you can embed R code chunks there. For example, so the well, let's first um, just draw a very simple scatter plot. Let's see, plot cars in the uh, block B. So now you can see an, an R plot here. And you can, you can certainly use other uh, packages like at the HTML widgets packages. For example, leaflet is one of these HTML widget packages. And you, by using this package, you can actually add a map to your, to your R markdown output. So you can embed a map over there. And you can also make use of other HTML widgets uh, packages like DT which makes it possible to show a data table. So you put a table in the third uh, block. Because my screen space is very limited here, you, can, you cannot actually see the content of the table here. So it's probably not uh, the best example to show here. Maybe let's change this to normal table. Yeah, so now I can see the, the, the content of this, this table. And for uh, dashboards created from the Flex dashboard package, the layout is actually uh, responsive in the, 
still it's similar to similar to the Tufty style. You can actually, when the when the page width is very narrow, you can see the layout automatically becomes the like this. So basically, the three blocks are arranged in uh, three three rows, so that uh, every block has a bigger uh, place uh, space uh, to show its content. So that is a very simple uh, dashboard example from the Flex dashboard package. And for the, for the map, can we define which region to show uh, at first? Like specific province in China or states in UN? Yeah, of course. Yeah, if you're interested in these maps, you can take a look at the documentation of the leaflet package. So it's actually, it's, it's, it's you, you can do a lot of complicated things with the leaflet package. Yeah, you can certainly define the initial view of your maps. All right, so next I'm going to show you a package for presentations. So this is uh, this Sharingan package is uh, a package that I wrote probably half a year ago. Um, so I showed, you know, is that I'm sorry? The, the word yes. Japanese? Yes, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's from the Japanese anime uh, named Naruto. You probably have heard of that. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to explain that too much, but uh, I just want to show. You. I just I just want to show you what you can do with uh, this package. So again, it's on Crane. If you have not installed that that package, you can install it, and then you will find it in the list of templates in our studio. Let's find uh, Sharingan. Uh, the template is named uh, Ninja Presentation. So basically, it will it will show you a, a let's name it as uh, Ninja. Why it's not under presentation? Ah, uh, that's a good question. So I haven't seen it before. I... Right. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So the the items document and the presentation here, they only show the built-in output formats in the R Markdown package. Okay. So all the templates from all other packages are displayed in, uh, in this panel. Okay, so now we've got the uh, default template here. Certainly, uh, click the knit button to compile this R Markdown HTML output, which looks like this. That's cool. Very different. So um, the output format is called uh, Sharingan colon colon Moon Reader. Don't ask me why. <laughs> so it takes uh, takes a while to explain these things. Uh, so basically, uh, this output format also has a number of uh, options um, uh, have been uh, documented in the in the Sharingan package. <clears throat> but I just want to show you uh, some of the features. So before that, actually, I want to mention that. This package is based on a JavaScript library named uh, remark.js. So it's a JavaScript library. And I, ba I basically I ported this JavaScript library into R and uh, built uh, an R Markdown extension package. And I think it's also easier to use the Sharingan package in, in, in R than creating slides directly from remark.js because as, as you have uh, seen, it a new uh, presentation from the, uh, from the menu of our studio. And is there, there are, a, 
Okay. Is there a picture in the subtitle? How can you insert a picture in the subtitle? The two swords in your document. Yeah, the, um, the words is that yeah. How can yeah, you so this there? Yeah, this is basically a, an emoji. It's it's not really a, a picture. It's 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 like an it's like an icon. <laughs> so you just copy paste. Yeah. So yeah, if you use a Mac, there's. A... I thought you're gonna to have the like the link to the file. Uh, no, it's 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 not an an image. It's 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 a character. Okay. Essentially. Okay. So there are a few options that you can config under the output format. For example, you can um, set your slides in the autoplay mode. So basically, you can, for example, if you if you want to play your play every page after every thirty seconds, you can specify the option autoplay to be uh, thirty thousand milliseconds, which means thirty seconds. So this can be useful for things like lightning talks. So you don't have to flip through your slides because it, it'll automatically play itself. Um, yeah, I can. Maybe this is not surprising. You can write uh, math expressions, which is not directly supported in Remark.js. And of course, R code chunks, text output, graphics output. You can also embed an HTML widgets. So actually, your question. So for this map, I set the initial view to a certain location. Standard hall of Iowa State University. That's a map. And you can show the uh, data table from the DT package. <clears throat> and all these things are interactive. You can sort the columns. You can go to different pages. Yeah. Your screen is moved now. All right, say that again. Yeah, your screen doesn't move now. It's static. Already. Oh, really? I don't know if just for me. Oh, now now it moves. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. For a couple of seconds. All right. All right. Okay, so um, character before. Okay. How can you, how can you make it a lot? Well, I I usually make problem with showing Chinese character. Do you need to install some specific package to do that? Uh, not really. I think there there was a bug in a certain package, but I believe if you update all of your packages, uh, you should be fine with um. Multi yeah, the, um, so the, the, the best feature of this sharing game package is probably an option named YOLO, YOLO. So if you set that to true, you will see someone in your slides, uh, which is, I have a picture here. So if you set YOLO equals true, uh, this output format will actually insert uh, Carl Broman's picture randomly in your slides. One of uh, the, the, the best feature of this uh, sharing package. And I found this one. Maybe it doesn't make, make much sense to other people, but. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to go through all of these features, and I just want to mention a little bit about the customization. Actually, this uh, the, the main reason that I was not very happy with uh, the built-in output formats for presentations in R Markdown was that customizing the appearance of these uh, presentations was not straightforward, I should say. But for sharing, and it's I think it's it's much easier. You can specify your own uh, CSS rules to uh, change the styles of any elements in your slides. 
And there are also many um, keyboard shortcuts in in this presentation format. You can press like the, the key H or question mark on your keyboard to see all the possible keyboard shortcuts. For example, um, you can you can press B to uh, black out your screen, or you can press P to enter the uh, presenters uh, presenters mode. So in this mode, you can actually see the current slide and a preview of your next slide and uh, a time counter, uh, a timer there. It's, uh, sometimes you can also embed notes for your, for yourself. Oh, actually, I forgot to mention the syntax of uh, the slides. So basically, for each new uh, slide, you use three dashes uh, to start a new slide. And inside a new slide, you can actually use uh, two dashes to make your content incremental, meaning that, for example, let's go back to this slide. So incremental means you can separate, you can, you can hold on some content, and they will only show up if you go to the next slide. So you can show your content step by step. So that's the basic uh, syntax of uh, Markdown in, in the remark.js framework. And there are also some other crazy uh, keyboard shortcuts. Like you, if you press M, uh, your slides will be mirrored. It will be turned upside down and left to right. So, for example, uh, if, for example, you can you can write. Sometimes, you, if you're you, if you're teaching like a tutorial and you have some exercises, you can put your solutions on this slide and press M so that your students will not be able be able to read the solutions directly, unless they turn their heads upside down and left to front. It's just it's just for fun. <laughs> Creative. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. The remark.js is a very creative framework. I, I loved it. All right, that's um, the sharing gun package. And oh, I, I just saw. I wanted to ask if I see that face again. Who is that guy? <laughs> He's a Carl Broman. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I heard that. <clears throat> Is yeah. he from Iowa, uh, University of Iowa, or oh, Wisconsin? Like right. <laughs> um, yeah, so lastly, I want to talk uh, two packages. One is book down, the other is blog down. And they are similar in the sense that um, they, they support multiple R markdown documents. So actually, so far, we have been talking about single R markdown documents. Basically, it's so one R markdown document and one output document. So the book down for book down, you can actually use multiple uh, R markdown documents to write a book. So basically, each R markdown document is a, a chapter in your book. Um, so again, let me show you an example. Uh, but actually, this for this example, it requires. Uh, I, I, I'm currently using a, a daily build of RStudio version 1.1.266 uh, because it, it, it's easier to create a new book down example because I can, I can choose the uh, type of the project to be a book project using book down. If you don't have the daily version of RStudio, you can certainly uh, call a function in Bookdown to create a new project. So just for my own convenience, let me just use the daily version of our studio. So create a new project named test Bookdown. And for this project, I have multiple RMD files. And as I said, each RMD is a chapter. And for this book, you will see a build panel 
um, at the bottom here. So you can build this book to multiple output formats, including PDF and ebook and another format called Gitbook, which is uh, an HTML output format. So I'm going to show you the Gitbook uh, for now. So basically, the Gitbook is it gives you multiple HTML pages. So by default, each of your R Markdown file will produce a, uh, a single HTML file. So as you can see on the first page, you see chapter one. You can navigate to the chapter two. So it's a multi-page multi uh, layout. And there's a sidebar on the left showing you the table of contents of your book. And of course, you can toggle this sidebar. You can search in your book. You can change the, you can change the theme of your book. For example, uh, darker theme. And you can also change the, 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 the typeface of your text. And also font size. There's a toolbar for sharing uh, the link of your book. Um, so, so actually, a book down. It's not only for like. Uh, it's not only for multiple R Markdown documents. It also extended the R Mark the Markdown syntax. So, in particular, it introduced it introduced the syntax for cross-referencing. For example, if, if you have a plot from an R code chunk which has a label, like nice fig here, you can cross-reference this figure using a syntax backslash at ref, then followed by a figure colon, then the, the, the chunk label. So you have, if you have that syntax there, from the body of your book, you can actually see the, the, the number of your figures or tables. For example, figure 2.1 here, figure uh, table 2.1 here. So it supports uh, cross references and many, many other features. I'm not going to show all of them, but the only thing you have to remember is that now you can use multiple RMD files to create a, a book. If you search, if you search a keyword in the book down the book generated HTML version, you will search mm -hmm. within that chapter or the whole book. It searches within the whole book. It's the whole book, okay. Yeah. What is that yeah. chapter? Because you basically you can't you can't scroll down um, on bottom of the chapter. You have to click the other chapter, right? Uh. You see what I mean? Yeah, if uh, for navigation, you, you, can, you can either click these navigation buttons or click in the table of contents here. And you can also use your, your keyboard, the left and the right arrows, to go, go to the previous or next chapter. Oh, actually, uh, I forgot to mention, I, I, I actually gave a, a webinar uh, last year on my book down. You can go to the R Studio website to watch the video, and that, hopefully that will give you a, a much better introduction to Bookdown. Because the time is limited today, so I'm, I didn't go to really go into much detail of the Bookdown package. And similarly for for Blockdown, um, so Blockdown is not on CRAN yet, so you have to install that from uh, GitHub. For now, I'm going to uh, create a new Blockdown project named uh, oops, Test Blockdown. And uh, okay, let's create a new project based on Blockdown. So Blockdown also supports multiple Output uh, multiple RMD files. And the Blockdown package is based on a static website generator called Hugo. So Hugo can compile your Markdown posts to a website. 
but it certainly it doesn't support R Markdown because Hugo is a package uh, developed uh, in the Go language instead of R. So basically, for a Hugo website, you will see uh, some files and directories. So there are some important ones. The first one is the config.toml file. That basically is a configuration file for your website. There are multiple options that you can set in the configuration file. And then the most important directory is content. So under the content directory, you can have your posts in or pages in plain markdown or uh, R markdown. So you have some markdown and R markdown files under content. And then uh, Blockdown has provided a, a default theme so that you can get started very quickly. And then after you have installed the Blockdown package, you will see from the add-ins menu, you will see some add-ins in the Blockdown package. And the, the one that you might use very frequently is the, the add-in called serve site. If you click serve site, Blockdown will compile your website. It will build all your IMD files, and you can see the actual output of these posts. So this is the default output from the default website output from Blockdown. It has some uh, static pages, like the About page. And it, it has, uh, we have also provided some sample posts, for example, an R Markdown post, where you can see the R code chunks and text output, and also uh, my personal favorite pie chart which shows you the sky and sunny side of the pyramid and the shady side of the pyramid. Yeah, I provided that example only for fun. It doesn't mean I, I like pie charts. So that's a markdown example. And you can also write in a plain markdown without any R code. So if you are not happy with this theme, you can go to the themes directory and add another Hugo theme. So everything about Blockdown has been um, documented in the in a book that I'm currently working on. So if you go to bookdown.org slash yihui slash Blockdown, you will see the comprehensive introduction to this Blockdown package and also to Hugo. Hopefully, you can learn uh, more about Blockdown uh, in this book. So actually, similarly, the, for the Bookdown package, <coughs> it also has a, a book named uh, Authoring Books and Technical Documents with R Markdown. It has already been published. So and, and I think this book is cheap enough, unlike the Nitter book, which was way too expensive, you can probably afford uh, this uh, book down book. So yeah, so if you want to know more about block down and book down, you can just go ahead and uh, read these two books. And also, I gave a webinar on block down a couple of um, weeks ago. So you can watch the video for more details about block down. OK, I think uh, that's pretty much I, ha I have for you today. And uh, thanks for your uh, patience. And yeah. All right. Thank you, everybody. And thank you, Yihui. Yeah. Um, for those Chinese uh, audience, I'm sorry um, if I didn't make things clear. If the event is announced using Chinese, it will be a Chinese talk. But if it's announced using English, it will be an English talk. Right now, it's um, under the, it's part of the program of ASA Stats on Marketing. So probably all of those going to be English. All right. <coughs> That's all. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye.